arms are open wide. Forgiveness is brought with the precious, precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray this morning. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that our sins were paid for in full, Lord, by your blood, Lord God. We thank you today, Lord God, that we can call you Lord and Savior. We thank you today, Lord God, that you are Lord of all, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that you saved us, Lord God. You redeemed us from the curse of sin, which is death, hell, and the grave, Lord God. And we thank you for life this morning. We thank you for supernatural favor, wisdom, Lord God. And we thank you for being with us, Lord God. I pray for those, Lord God, who who join uh, uh, or who watch these, Lord God, on the various social media platforms, people who you've commented on how these messages have blessed you. I pray that they continue to be a blessing to you. I pray that as the Lord provides, that as we get a building, that you would join us in person. If you are in the area, I am sincerely praying for those who uh, who join us through online platforms and other things, Lord God. you We have a consensus this morning, wherever two or more gather together, there you are in the midst, Lord God. And so we decrease this morning and pray that you would increase. Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, that you would just so use us, Lord God, as your instruments, Lord God. Use me this morning as a spoon or a fork to bring food to the body that we might grow thereby, Lord God, is so important, Lord God, for us, Lord God, to recognize, Lord God, that we are your stewards, Lord God. We are stewards of what it is that you've entrusted in us and what you've given us, Lord God. We have this treasure in earth and vessels, Lord God, the treasure of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. And we just thank you. We thank you this morning for the blessed opportunity. We have breath in our bodies, Lord God. We have a vision, Lord God, that has been given to us by you, Lord God. And Father God, we just pray that you would give us the strength to carry it out. And Lord God, we are expected this morning, expecting to hear from you, Lord God, expecting you to move in our midst, Lord God. And we just want to give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we seal this prayer. And all of God's people say, Amen, amen, and amen. Stewards of God. Stewards of God. This is this is so very, very, very important uh, for us to truly understand. And in fact, um, it encompasses everything that we do for God. It's steward of God. It's basically, are you doing, are you maximizing? Everything that God has given you, are you maximizing everything that God has given you? <clears throat> Last night, I, I had the pleasure and the honor of, of, of speaking before uh, a crowd of multiple types of people on a panel and uh, discussing how God and government are, are intermingled and in, and. In, sharing the stage with other pastors and speaking to a multiplicity of people uh, from very young to, to very old uh, about us as believers and our duty and our role to speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. In season, out of season regardless of the topic, regardless of the situation, how we have to be great stewards of the word of God. And that's just one aspect. So I'm going to, I'm going to go into the scripture and then I'll, I'll allow the Holy spirit to just use me and, and share uh, that experience because it, it was profound uh, afterwards to, to see the hunger of individuals who are just hungry for the word of God. They're just hungry for the truth. Uh, we, we, you know, uh, you look at some, you look at some places and you see a big church and you think, wow, these people are, are getting something. And actually it's the opposite. People are inside of big buildings and big crowds and starving 
because it's a show and not the word of God. You can only live off of the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So it's the bread of life. So I can come into a physical building and I can get a great concert and walk out empty. I can get a great motivational speech. I can be around all of these people and still be famished. That's what's happening right now in today's time. That's what's happening right now. I'm not telling you something that, I, that, 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 I'm, that I'm speculating. I'm telling you what people are telling me. Telling you what people are saying. Man, I, man, I wish I could. hear more of the truth of the word of God. And I'm thinking, well, you're in this big, you got this. I saw, I know where you go fellowship at. Yeah. That's a big brother. It ain't even, I'm like, what show smoke and mirrors, his word and his time. That's the first thing that I want to talk about us being stewards of his word and his time time. So first off, I want to talk about a steward. A steward is a person, this is a English version, this is a Webster's dictionary, if you will, definition of what it means to be a steward, a person who manages another's property or financial affairs, one who administers anything as the agent of another or others. You're managing something. Someone has left you something. Someone is giving you charge over something. Whether it be property, whether it be wealth, whether it be something that they deem valuable, they're giving you charge over it to manage it. A person who has charge of the household or of another buying or obtaining food, directing the servants. Notice it also deals with people. Sometimes we're stewarding people. We have to be good stewards. We were just talking about a couple of weeks ago where it says, or a week ago, uh, sometimes the messages get intertwined. I can't remember when I teach what, but I do remember talking about training up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. Well, guess who's the steward of the child, the parent. So that's where an instance to where we could be stewards of people. Me as a teacher of the word of God, I have a responsibility as a steward of a, his word to dig into this word, to study and to teach the truth. That's it. I'm going to be held to a higher standard because of my role in the kingdom as teaching the word of God. I cannot and will not. I refuse to lie to people. We have to have this in our spirit, but guess what? Everyone underneath the sound of my voice is a steward of God's word. And so first Corinthians chapter four, first Corinthians chapter four, starting at verse one in the amplified. So then let us who minister be regarded as servants of Christ and stewards, trustees, administrators of the ministries of God that he chooses to reveal. In the case, in this case, moreover, it is required as essential and demanded of stewards that one be found faithful and trustworthy. We can hone in on those two words. So let us then minister, who minister be regarded as servants of Christ. So you're servant of Christ. Remember that. And, 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 you know, that sounds so simplistic, but you know, sometimes we get to thinking that we're actually servants of people. We serve people, but we're serving them on behalf of Christ. When Jesus, when the, when the word, of, when the word of God says, do all as unto the Lord, that's what that means. It's, a, it's as if. Jesus is the owner of the restaurant and he's paying us to go out and serve people. So now you may be bringing a drink to the table of the individual. You may be bringing out some chicken or some steak or whatever it is, but you're not serving the people per se. 
You're serving people on behalf of the one who's called you to serve. So, and it's, so literally, we are servants of Christ. So when we go out to feed the homeless, that's why Jesus said it like this, and he made it so personal. He said, when I was sick, you came to me. When I was without, when I was without food, when I was without clothes, when I was when I was in prison, you came to visit me. And so people were astonished. They, they, they were perplexed because what Jesus was talking about didn't make sense. Because they, of course, were thinking carnally in the flesh. Like, wait a second, Jesus, I, I've I've never seen you in prison. So, what are you talking about? I, I've never seen you on. A, I've never given you any bread on the side of the road. I, I've never given you a peanut butter jelly sandwich on a Sunday. I, I've, I've never I've never seen you out at Burrell Park. I've, I've I've never gone into to the Pope Correctional Institution and saw you personally. And he says, as much as you've done it to them. In another way to say it, just as you're doing it to them, for every one sandwich you hand out, for every one that you pray for, every time that you walk into a facility, you're doing it for me. It's as if I'm standing there with my hand out saying, thank you for the sandwich. It's as if I'm standing there in prison waiting for you to walk through the doors and bring me a word, sing me a song, sp smile for me just to lift up my spirits. It's as if I am personally there. And so when we take up this mentality as we minister, and then it says, as servants of Christ, as stewards, we take up this mentality. It changes the perplexity. It changes the whole way that we view ministry. It changes the whole way that we view the Lord. Stewards, trustees, administ administrators of the mysteries of God that he chooses to reveal. So now, when God wanted to speak to, 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 to Pharaoh, he sent Moses. When God wanted to get a message across to David after he had sinned with Bathsheba, slept with Bathsheba and had her husband killed, he sent the prophet. He sent the prophet to rebuke him. You would have thought he could have spoke from heaven. You would have thought he could have, you know, manifested himself in front of David and spoke. No, he says, I'm going to use you. So now when he gives us a word, it's as if he delivers it to us and says, hey, now take this message. If we could put it in our hands, take this message and deliver it to this person. And so one of the things that one of, the, one, one of my brothers in Christ said last night, another pastor from out of state. As we were talking before we went out and we were we were ministering, he said, you know, God, God holds us accountable, not for what we not just for what we say, but for what we don't say. And as it pertains to government, you know, I was we were we were, we were talking about how the church needs to get involved and we can't stay silent because there's this thing about the silent majority and there's this thing about turning blind eye and so on and so forth uh, about that. And so I use my social media platform. One of my posts in regards to uh, this election and Kamala Harris, you know, I look at I look at God and the wisdom of God and how he will use tools, still being a good steward, because this is something that was given to me, a platform, various platforms. So with this one platform, I was able to reach close to 250,000 people with one post. 250,000 people saw this post that was spreading the truth. And what I mean by silent majority, where there's this thing that, well, I believe this way about these issues because it goes against my God. It goes against the word of God, but I'm going to remain silent because I don't want to offend people and I don't want to make people angry or upset. And so we, we said we, we, we can't we can't ill afford to do that. So that so I love I love also what we did last night. We were talking about it's, it's not just about us sitting here and you clapping and you saying amen and praise God because the word is going forward. That's great. But everybody has a charge 
to be a steward and an evangelist. Do the work of the evangelist. See, the world is very good at evangelizing. And what do you mean by evangelizing? Well, they're pushing LGBTQ, elemental P. They're pushing uh, transgenderism. They're pushing all of these different issues out there to our children. They're, pu they're pushing, uh, you can have an abortion and it's okay. You can be gay and it's okay. You can be transgender and it's okay. They're pushing their agenda, their agenda. While the church or the body of Christ says, well, I'm going to remain silent because I don't want persecution. And God says, no, you can't no longer remain silent. I've made you a steward of what you know. See, we're held accountable for what we know. If you know that a building is about to blow up and you know that you have intel and you allow 100 people to go in there and have dinner or lunch and the building blows up, you, you don't share any accountability and what happened to those people? Absolutely. Same thing with people on their way to hell. Same thing with people on their way to the voter polls. You can say that I'm a Christian and I vote my values. You can tell them that. That's this is that's, that's something in a simplistic thing, in a simplistic way. But but I, 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 I and, and as the Holy Spirit leads me this morning, I'm just going to teach on some things that are that are relevant that are going on like right this minute. There is a there is a young there is a guy. I don't call him Pastor Jamal Bryant. He's the one that had Kamala Harris at his church after she said that the guy who said Jesus is King, Christ, uh, Christ is Lord, you're in the wrong church. There's another brother who's very vocal online who I follow and, you know, I'm saying interact with the things of that nature, Mar Marcus Rogers. And so he put out a post of all these different pastors and all these different bishops that are actually, they, they, they put an ad out. The church, I'm not going to call them a part of the church because I, 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 I sent a message to Jamal Bryant. I'm not. I'm not afraid. I'm. I'm. I, big church in Atlanta. I don't care. I speak for Christ. I told. I. I. I, I rebuked him. You're dead wrong. Because this pastor right here is not going to be silent. You're dead wrong for leading people to support somebody that is in support of murdering children. I'm a steward of what I know, whether or not a person listens or not, it's not up to me. The sower sows the word. In other instances, there are times when it's not time to be silent. I may, we are stewards of his word. See, we get this revelation and we think, mm, I got the revelation, but uh, get your own. No, the Bible tells us to make disciples. Tells us, the church, to make disciples because he's revealed things to us. And now there's times when God would have us to speak what, been, what has been revealed to us to them. So I have the revelation of who this woman is operating in witchcraft. And I'm going to reveal it to this man, whether or not he wants to listen to it or not. And I put it right on the line so everybody else can see it in the church and everything. They hold church lie. Here you go. Speaking the truth in love. They put the video out and I, and I shared the video and I put a, I put a title on it. This is what false teachers and false prophets look like. The devil knows scripture. He did it. He quoted it in the garden. I mean, I, he, he, well, he did quote it in the garden because Jesus said, God said that you shall not eat of this fruit of the, of the tree. And Satan came right behind and, and, and contradicted it. He was tempted after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He quoted Psalms 91 to Jesus. He quoted the word. So when we see people with big platforms and big, and we think that, well, they're using the Bible. Well, the devil used the Bible. That's not a, that's not something that should disarm us because somebody comes up to, uh, comes up to us with a Bible. Well, he's a Christian, so I'm going to disarm now. No. We got to be discerning. Verse two. In this case, moreover, it is required 
as essential and demanded. This is essential and demanded. This is not something that we have a choice in. This is not something that, well, I can do it and I can't do it. If I want to do it, if I feel like doing it, if I feel comfortable, if the time is right, if the, if the sun is shining in the right spot, all of that stuff, irrelevant to God. It is required and demanded of stewards that one be found faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? You keep doing what you're doing over long periods of time. You keep doing what you're doing when it's challenging, when it's difficult, when it's liked, when it's not liked, when they're cheering, when they're booing, when they're, all of those things apply. We have to keep spreading the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to keep shining light on darkness. We have to keep putting light on it. We have to not be afraid to be the voice. Guess what? You know what? One of the things that came up and I spoke on it last night. How did we get to where we are? today because the church the bible says that the church is the only thing that cannot be defeated said the gates of hell won't prevail against the church so how is it that this flood of all of this evil has invaded our country how is it that the lgbtq community has spread and the transgenderism has spread and and all of these things have spread and and all you know and, and everything that we see violence and and all of this cancel culture all of these different things how is it that it spread because the church was the silent majority see the devil knows that the church the devil knows that death and life are in the power of your tongue and if i can get you to shut up if i can get you to say not say nothing on social media if i can get you to be quiet i know the power of your words I know the power when you declare and decree something. That's why I was talking about the authority that we have in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Notice it did not say the entire United States of America needed to come together and pray. He just said, if my people. He didn't say the entire church, because not everybody goes to church or his people. He just said, if my people, if my people, Humble this. How do we humble ourselves? Lord, we can't do it on our own. Lord, forgive me for not saying nothing. Lord, forgive me for trying to save this relationship. Lord, forgive me for trying to save myself from persecution. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I repent of being a timid and shy Christian. Lord, I repent for not saying anything. How dare I sit on my, how dare I shut my mouth when you bled and died on a cross for me openly in front of everybody how dare i take this message that you died to give me that you that 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 you were persecuted and, and just crown of thorns on your head agonizing pain and i dare shut my mouth at a time when you would have me to speak i repent that's that should be that should that's where true we want revival. Revival doesn't come without repentance, and if and the, and it's not just repentance. We think well, you need to repent. We we point to the world when you need to repent and you need to get right. No, 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 no. The Bible says that when judgment comes, it falls at the house of God first. How about the bishops need to fall on their face? How about the pastors? We need to fall on our faces. How about the evangelists? How about the people singing in the choir? How about the people passing out tracts? How about everybody in the body of Christ needs to be the first one to turn back to our first love? How about the body of Christ? We need to repent to God. God, you know what? I was too quiet on that. You know what, Lord? I should have said something. You know what, Lord? I should be praying more. You know what, Lord? I should be fasting more. We make excuses for why we can't do what God has already called us to do. This is go time. You know, in the military, when there's when it's time, when it's like, okay, it's oh, 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 0800 hours or whatever time it is, and they say it's go time, that means it's it. This is it. The war is on. It's not coming. The war is here. The war is here. And guess what? What is the war over, souls? God is saying, I've placed my power on the inside of you to bring people out of darkness 
into light to expose. I've given you stewardship over my word and I need you to speak it. Second Timothy, familiar verse, we, we, we know this, but faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There are people who are looking for relevance in the word of God uh, and seeing teaching that connects to the real world around them. It's one of the main reasons why youth, when they leave off, whether it's to to school or the military or just living off on their own or whatever it is they do, whenever they leave the home, they leave Christ behind. Whenever they leave and do what they do, Christ takes a backseat. They become busy in life. Christ is not prioritized. It amazes me how we can prioritize everything else. When it's time to clock in for work, we're, we're locked in. There are no distractions. There's nothing else I got to do. I'm locked in because why? I prioritize the importance of what it is that I need to do. This job is important. So how is it that that work gets that type of attention, but God gets the nonchalant, I'll do it when I want to do. I can be distracted. I can do all of these things. No. Don't tell me who your God is. Show me. Don't tell me Jesus is Lord. Show me. When people tell me that Jesus is Lord in their life, I don't, I don't, I don't listen because Jesus said they honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me. I just watch what they do. I watch what they prioritize. I watch what's most important in their life. I watch, I watch things that they're saying, that they're doing. That's what Jesus said, the fruit. If I sit up here and tell you I'm an orange tree and you just wait for the fruit to blossom, you don't know whether I'm an orange tree, an apple tree. You don't know which one I am until you see the fruit manifest. The fruit manifests in the fruit of the spirit. The fruit manifests in my faithfulness to God. I solemnly charge you, 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God, of Jesus Christ, of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right and even when it's not. Keep your sense of urgency whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether it's convenient or inconvenient or welcome or unwelcome, correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. Why is that so difficult for us to love people? See, this is a time to correct people who err in doctrine or behavior. And I'm talking about people who are calling themselves Christians. Because you can't correct the world in doctrine. They're not in the doctrine of Christ. That's why it's talking about the church. It's not talking about correcting the world. It says correct those who err in doctrine. The world doesn't adhere to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So it's talking about the church. This is to the church or behavior. Warn those who sin. Exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity. Hey, brother, I see you following the crime. Man, Jesus Christ. Go up. Well, I see you faithful in this thing. With inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. Inexhaustible patience. How do we have inexhaustible patience? We wear out. But the spirit of the Lord on the inside of us should not. We wear out, but the, the, the spirit of the Lord on the inside of us does not. The joy of the Lord is our strength, not our joy. Not our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So if God has called us to a specific task, we're not going to wear out in the task. If we wear out in the task, that means that we're not filling ourselves with more of him. That's why I always say, Lord, I decrease that you might increase because less of me, I, I have a limit. My, my patience has a limit in the human sense. My, my love has a limit. All of those things has a limit. My tolerance has a limit. All of those things have a limit. But the Holy Spirit on the inside of me is inexhaustible. So now I need to tap into him. For the time will come, which is now. And I'm not going to go on it because we, we, we've heard this before, but it basically talks about there's a time when people want to hear to sound doctrine. They want to hear to correction. They'll, they'll, they'll rebuke correction. They'll rebuke teaching. They'll rebuke what is right. They already know it. 
they, they think they know everything. And so at this point, you know what? God says some of those people will be given over to a reprobate mind. And what that means is that they'll be given over to think that they're right in their own mind. And when they leave here, they're going to realize that they were wrong. Or consequences will set in. Because it's just like gravity. Somebody could say, well, I don't really believe that. And I don't think that, you know, gravity works this way. Okay. When you jump off a building, whether or not you believe gravity exists or not, you're going to find out that gravity is real. So that's what I was talking about last week, where you don't cast your pearls amongst swine. You just allow people to bear the consequences of their decisions. They, they believe that they, they know, okay, all right, well, try it your way. Go ahead. See what that looked like in five years. One thing you one 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 thing a person can argue is the is the uh the repercussions of their actions. Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19, 15. Proverbs 19, 15. Time. God has made us stewards of time. This is this this is also huge. Stewards of our time. Everybody gets the same 24 hours a day. How is it that some people get more out of their 24 hours than others? Sometimes people say, well, I got to get organized. Well, first you need to prioritize and then organize. Prioritize is what's most important in my life. See, I can have a full plate, but everything that's on my plate is not necessarily something that God would have on my plate. So now I'm trying to prioritize things that I might have a list that's 15 uh, 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 things long. God says, well, really, five are the only things that are necessary right now in this season in your life. You can take off these other 10. That's a prayer and wisdom. But again, we can't say, well, I'm busy or I don't have time when something on our plate that's taking up time is not necessarily something that God would have us ha be doing. I could pick up a bowling uh, 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 habit, hobby. You know, I picked up the bowling hobby and, you know, my bowling crew. So, man, my plate is so full. And, and God says, well, I called you to teach my word. So bowling night needs to take a back seat to what I called you to do. See, I can't say that I'm busy and my plate is full when I put things on my plate that God hasn't called me to put on my plate and then say that I'm stewarding what God. No, 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 no. I got to first need I need a revelation of what it is that God has called me to do. Put that in priority and then steward that. If that makes sense. And then one of the things that I have to guard against in Proverbs 19, 15 and amplified God, uh, Proverbs 19, 15 and amplified laziness casts one into sleep unmindful of lost opportunity. The idle person will suffer hunger. You can't be lazy. It's not in the Bible, but the principle is in the Bible where my dad would tell me all the time, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. If it were easy, everybody would be doing it. So there are some things that are difficult and challenging but that's just because it's not mediocrity. People who achieve excellence usually sacrifice something. People who achieve, achieve greatness in Christ are the ones who fully focus on God and they give it his all. Guess what? Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. That doesn't mean that there are not things that are challenging, but with the strength of the Lord, the joy being our strength, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. I remember going through school and the Lord had led me to go through school said, so this is going to be a part of your testimony when, you, when, when you've come out and you've achieved this because I want to use this for my glory. And I remember going through going through my bachelor's and I was we had started a business, Hope for Today Staffing. We had started a ministry, Hope for Today Ministries. And this is the time when we had a building, uh, first building, and we were going in every Sunday. 
And in the midst of me uh, uh, being a husband and in the midst of me being a dad and being in the midst of me having to study for school and in the midst of me having to uh, uh, go out and, and meet with business owners and, and, and make sure that workers were going on time through our staffing company. And in the midst of us still going out and feeding the homeless and everything, I had to prioritize what was important. And then I had to realize that, you know what? A normal person, and I say normal like somebody that's not really doing, you know, things the, the way that the Lord would have them to do. It's not to say that God doesn't want us to rest, but a normal person will have a normal schedule where they they sleep eight hours, they wake up, go to work for eight hours, and then by you know they take a shower, eat, and by by seven eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night, they're winding down. That was not my story for a season. My story was getting up at 6 a.m. and not making it to bed till, one, till midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning because I had to study and do homework and I had to submit assignments and things of that nature. And that was very challenging. Then we got a school. And now we got the school and we got the ministry and we got the staffing and we got this and we got that. And all of these things still have to be still have to do all of the things that are prioritized. My wife, my children, all of these things. And so all of that was very challenging. And there are moments where I was like, God, I need some strength. I need some help. There were things there were times it was just like, man, I got to. I thought my day was over with, and now I got two, three hours worth of homework that I need to do. I got this paper I need to submit. And then, I, you know, on this Saturday, I got this coming up, and I got to take, you know what I'm saying, take get my daughters over here and do this and this, all of these things. And in the midst of all of that, I was reminded to whom much is given, much is required. I was reminded that there were choices that I made in life, some some good, some bad, that made up my whole set of circumstances that caused it to be a little bit more challenging for me at certain times in my life. So laziness cast one into sleep, unmindful of lost opportunity. I didn't want to lose any opportunities that the Lord was trying to present to me on the account of it was hard. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Utilize our time wisely. And I say wisely, not according to our wisdom. See, when people say use your time wisely, they think about, well, let me go in here and let me make up a calendar and let me make up a list of things. No, 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 no. Jesus is the CEO of our lives. So we take, the, so we take what we're thinking and we say, okay, Lord, this is what I need to be doing right now. And now I'm going to present it to you for you to help me manage. And once you give me the order, once you give me what's priority, because there are things in my life that the Lord told me to say no to. There were opportunities in my life that the Lord told me to say, no, don't do that. Not right now. Can't take on that. And no, you need time for prayer. See, we, 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 we clutter up our lives with things and then we, we, we neglect the fact that prayer needs to prioritize. And then we're wondering why we're so edgy, we're so snappy, we're so exhausted, we're so this, because you ain't spending time with God in prayer. We're wondering why we feel so depleted, because guess what? You're, we're not spending time with the one who, re, who, who replenishes us. It's easy to get frustrated and edgy and snappy and all of this stuff when you don't have, and it's, and it's a temptation. Guess what? When you get tired, been there, done that water t-shirt, bought the mug, drunk in it twice and took it back. We have to recognize that in those moments, God has called us to peace, not anxiety. God has called us to rest. And I'm not talking about rest meaning don't do nothing. You can have a 15, 16 hour day and still have peace. You can do a 15, 16 hour day and still have strength because the joy of the Lord is your strength. I know because I, I've, I've done it. I've been in seasons where I've, I had to do it. God has strengthened me. Psalms, just nuggets here as the Holy Spirit speaks. These are nuggets for life. Because you are a steward of time. God gives you, gives us time. We don't know how much time each and every one of us has. I don't want to get up and meet him and say, Johnny, you, you wasted my time. 
I gave you X amount of days. I gave you X amount of years. I gave you so much time. You prioritize this. You didn't pray enough. You wasn't in your word enough. You took on stuff that I never even called you to take on. Psalms 90, <clears throat> verse 12. Psalms 90, verse 12 in the King James. So teach us, Holy Spirit, this is, this is us, intimate relationship. Holy Spirit, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Number my days. What are you talking about, God? Teach me to value time. Teach me to value that. Teach me to number. You know what? I know some of us, it looked like we blinked and we turned 30, we turned 40, we turned 50. It, it's like we blinked and it was just like, man, time fly. And, 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 and if you don't think about that personally, just think about the children who were babies and you blinked and now they're in high school. Yesterday, you, they was they was toddlers and you blinked and now they're in college. You blinked and now they got a husband or a wife and their own kid. You blink. Value the number of your day. Teach us to number our days. That means, that means as I'm prioritizing, what's, what's priority in perspective of God and the kingdom of God? The utmost priority in God's eyes and in the kingdom for the, for the kingdom of God is souls. Everything centers around. Us being stewards of his word, us ministering to Christ, us ministering to Christ. Notice I did not say people minister because he's the one that said I was sick and I was homeless and I was in prison ministering to Christ. Everything centers around that. <clears throat> and it's enjoyable. It's not, it's not, it's not egregious. It's not something that we dread. Oh Lord, we got to go to this prison. Oh Lord, we got to go out here with these homeless people. Oh Lord, we got to do this. Oh my goodness. Oh Jesus. No, it's not. If it is, then whatever it is, you need to stop doing it. Not to say that it, not to say that everything should be about our emotions. Don't get me, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. There are some things that from a physical standpoint are not easy. Emotionally, physically, it don't make me happy. No, that's that's not about fa faithfulness. Has nothing to do with happiness. I'm pretty sure that when Jesus was on the cross, he wasn't sitting up there like, "Oh, this feels so good." <laughs> Woo! Hey, thief over there, thief over here. Yeah, boy, it's a good day. No, that was his faithfulness. Pretty sure when Paul was getting stoned, when he was shipwrecked, when he had forced fastings, meaning that he just didn't have no food. And because he didn't have no food, he decided to go on a fast. Not he had food in the refrigerator and said, well, I'm going to fast. No, I ain't got no food in the refrigerator, nothing in the pantry. So I'm just going to fast because this is an opportune time for me to take advantage of not having any food. I'm pretty sure that those times weren't happy. If we were to give him a, 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 a reality show and people were to follow him around, they'd be like, man, that looks like a miserable life. But faithfulness does not require my emotions to agree with what's going on. I I'll say that again. We're always looking for our emotions to agree with what is going on. No, that's not, that's, that's not true ministry. That's not true faithfulness. That's not the call of God. There are things that are challenging, but are necessary. That still bring us joy. Joy is not happiness. All the time, it can bring, it can manifest into happiness. Joy is when I'm just doing it because, man, it's challenging, but I'm doing it for the Lord. Boy, this thing is rough sometimes, but I am doing that. There's a reward at the end. Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. In other words, as he was hanging up there, he kept his mind on the fact that there's a coming a future day. 
that all mankind will be redeemed. There's coming a future day with what I'm doing today is going to be attributed unto me as a crown of righteousness in heaven. God is going to place a crown. He says that our works shall be evaluated. That's what the word says. Ephesians 5, 15, Ephesians 5, 15, and they amplified Ephesians 5, 15, and they amplified still talking about stewardship, still talking about stewarding his word. Now his time, Ephesians 5, 15, look at what it says. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 15, 16, and they amplified, therefore see that you walk carefully. Living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil. Not as unwise, but wise, but as wise, wise in the Lord, sensible, intelligent, discerning people. See to it that you walk carefully, living life with honor, honor unto who? Unto the Lord. So in any given situation. This is a question to ask yourself. Does this give God honor or does it give him shame? Does this bring God glory or does it bring his name shame? Whether or not people are looking at you or not, I'm not talking about public sin because, of course, in public eye, if we were to do something, it would bring God, God's name shame, right? Not that we could ever shame God because he's holy, He's this, but I'm just saying as his representative. Therefore, see that you walk carefully living with honor. I got to bring him honor. Purpose, living with purpose. What is your purpose? What are, what purpose, purposefully doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Courage, living life with courage. That's not being a part of the silent majority. I can't be a part of the silent majority. Shunning those who tolerate and enable evil. Shunning those who tolerate and enable evil. Not as unwise, but wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people. Got to have discernment. Got to be discerning. Hmm, what's going on over there? I hear what he's saying, but what, what, what's really being said behind us? I see what he's saying, but what is he doing? What is she doing? Making the very most of your time on earth. Look at that. Making the very most of your time. Are we doing that? That's a, that's a rhetorical question that only we can answer. Are we making the most of our time on earth? recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. We don't have time to waste time. Are we making the most of our time? Taking advantage of each opportunity in the Lord, not of each opportunity that's presented to us because the devil will present some opportunities to us. Our flesh will get us to thinking that this is an opportunity. Are we taking advantage of every opportunity in the Lord? Wealth and gifts. Wealth and spiritual gifts. I'm not going to read the entire scripture, but I do want us to go to Matthew 25. Starting at verse 14. In the King James, KJV, King James, starting at verse 14. This is Jesus talking about wealth, money. People think the talents in this scripture is talking about physical talents like tap, dance, and singing and all that. No, 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 no. The scripture, if you go back in the Greek, the scripture uh, is talking about wealth, money. And you'll see that uh, as we go along in the scripture. I'm not going to read the entire scripture for the sake of time, but I am going to uh, read a portion of this. And I say sake of time, we, we, we have a... We have to we have to drop off a whole bunch of clothes uh, to a location for our uh, homeless uh, e event uh, here um, coming up towards the end of this month. Um, Matthew twenty five fourteen for the kingdom of heaven is at is a is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another, and to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away and took his journey. This is Jesus. 
This is Jesus. How do I know that this Jesus is a parable? Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Where I go, there you may be. So he's off to prepare a place for me. This is the, the man that's traveling to a far country. He's using this in the parable, uh, metaphor type speech. But he's saying, I've left you with something. I've left you with something that you might do something with it. There are resources that we have at our disposal that he's left us with. And it says, and then he that received the five talents traded it with the same and made five other talents. And likewise, he that had two also, the other gained two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid the Lord's money. And so fast forwarding, <clears throat> the Lord comes back. Those servants that actually multiplied his wealth, uh, they traded it, they invested it. What do I mean? So what does that mean to invest? What, what would Jesus be talking about when he's talking about investing talents and money today? Well, investing means I'm, I'm, I'm furthering the advancement of the kingdom. If you look at the Bible, if you look at uh, uh, Jesus, when the disciples were here and he sent them out and he told them, don't take any, don't, he says purses or money scripts or things of that nature. But let me translate that. Don't take any wallets. Don't take your bank card. Don't take your debit card. Don't take anything with you because back during those days and times, which is still applicable, to, applicable today, the people who were in full-time ministry, that's what they did. And so God said, whoever's house you go to, there'll be the ones that provide your food. There'll be the ones that provide your sustenance, your living and things of that nature. And if you look at the early church, uh, even when, when Ananias and Sapphira uh, uh, lied, to, lied to the Holy Spirit and they said, yeah, we sold the land and here's all the money. They died not because they didn't give the Lord uh, everything that they had. They lied because they said that they were giving him according to what the land costs. So basically, hey, we sold this house and you know they really sold it and they got $500,000 for it. They got before Peter and said, hey, we only made $100,000. Here's $100,000 from what it is that we gave to the Lord. And again, this was for the advancement of the kingdom. People don't like to talk about uh, finances or money as it pertains to the kingdom of God, because there are so many people who are false prophets, false teachers who are out there doing different things and various things with the money. But again, it's between you and the Lord. You're not giving unto God. I mean, giving unto man, you're giving unto God. This is a principle. How do we think lights and, and, and water bills and all of these things get paid for? How do you think all of these churches run missions? That's one of the reasons why we need to make America great again. Make America was one of the most wealthiest, still is, but it's going to be uh, wealth it, it, with, with that beyond our wildest dreams that is going to come about in the next two to three years. Within the next year or so, we're going to see a rapid change. This is not something that Pastor Jay has said. This is something that has been prophesied out of the mouth of his prophets about this nation. Why? Because we fund more Christian missions than any other nation in the world. We fund more money towards Christian missions. How do you think people can go to Haiti? They just don't get on the plane and say, well, I'm traveling for Jesus. Let me get on this plane for free. No, they have to pay. And it's funny how we how we pay for everything else, but we don't want to fund the Christian missions of the body of Christ. And we're not doing it for him again. We're doing it as unto the Lord. <clears throat> again, what is priority? What is priority in our lives? Our vision and mission through Hope for Today Ministries is not just to be able to have our own uh, missions and visions, so to speak, which we, we already know what they are. The school and, and educating children from preschool all the way up to high school. And even after that, God has given Shantae a vision and, a, and, a, and, a, and she's give, he's given her over 20, 30 plus years of expertise and training children from infancy all the way to high school. That's a gift. That's something that the Holy Spirit has given her. Well, guess what? We want to have more than just one school. We want to have multiple schools. That takes finances. But God says that I own all the silver and the gold. But we have to get all the people in the body of Christ with this mindset 
that it's about building the kingdom. We want to be able to expand and to go into more prisons and train up more people to go into prison. We want transitional houses. Our vision has not changed. We want to have those people who are coming to the church, who are coming to the building as God provides a building to now, as we're going out to the senior community, we have people who are assigned to ministering to the seniors. We have people who are assigned to going into the prisons. We would still go, but I'm saying we want to multiply. How do we multiply. Well, guess what? My uh, the, the, the vision that God has given us is that we want people who are able to have a salary to just be able to do that. I don't want you to be able to say, well, I got a balance between work and I got to go to this transitional house. No, sister. Here's 10 transitional houses with women loaded up in them. Here's a salary. Here's here, here's a, 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 a fund that will that will that will have you the ability to, to fund lunches and breakfasts and take and, and celebrate birthdays and do all of these different things for the kingdom of God to hold Bible studies. Every woman come out, they get a Bible, they get a concordance, all of these different things. It's biblical. Jesus says that the church should be the ones taking care of the orphan. How are we going to take care of the orphan? With limited resources, how are we going to help take care of the widow? The Bible says that they shouldn't be going to the welfare office. They should be coming to the church. True widows, they said biblically, they said the church should be allocating funding every month to take care of the widow. How do we do that without a budget? How do we do that without money? How do we do that without people buying in and saying, I'm going to give because the Lord told me to give? We, we've demonized money. And the Bible says that money is at the root of all evil. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil. I thank God that he's given us this heart. And I'm, 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 I'm saying this out of, of the passion of the Holy Spirit. People have, people have these big, big edifices and, and these big grand things. And it's great. You know what I'm saying? But we have to limit what we think that we need to beautify a building and focus on the people. I don't need to spend $100 million dollars on a building and get and give ten thousand dollars to missions that's 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 out of balance yeah we need a building but we don't need it with gold plated seats and 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 and, and, and fit and, and two million dollars worth of it's sound and lights equipment all of that's grandiose we just need something that functions we need trucks to be able to send evangelists out to say, hey, here's here's a truck. Here's some equipment. Go out and do your thing. Here, go to Sam's Club. Don't buy the the sandwiches or the peanut butter or the what. We we got funding for that. Don't buy. Don't worry about doing all of these different things. The church is here to fund it all. That's what Jesus is talking about. But see, here's the thing: people thinking that Jesus is not going to come back and hold us to account. He's sharing this parable. He's saying, I'm going away. I've given you resources. I've given you wealth. And there's going to come a time where I'm coming back and we're going to go through line by line audit items in which you've done with what I've given you. The wealth isn't yours. There's going to be some pastors that, well, well, Lord, you know, I needed this Bentley, but you knew that sister so-and-so's lights needed to be on. Well, Lord, you know, I needed this uh, $100,000 Rolex, but you know that brother so-and-so just lost his job and he could have used at least $5,000 to help him through a trying time. That's what God is saying I'm going to evaluate. You know that this family needed an operation and you had it, but that's the kingdom of God. Kingdom, kingdom minded. He says to the one servant that buried the talent, he calls him a wicked servant. Calls him wicked. Why? Because you didn't do anything with what I gave you. And then he says in, in verses 24 through 28, he said, you could have given it to the bankers and I could have received credit. At least you just buried it. You didn't even, you didn't even attribute interest on the money. I can read that scripture. 25, 14 through 30. Let's go to Luke, where he gives us the charge. 19, 12, and 13. 19, 12, and 13. And a certain, a certain nobleman went into a far country and received for himself a kingdom and to return. 
This is again Jesus. I'm going to prepare a place. A certain nobleman went to a far country. And he called his servants and delivered unto them 10 pounds. It's a lot of wealth. I want to say it was the equivalent of a year's wages or something like that. Can't remember right now. Occupy until I come. That word occupy means do business. Do business until I come. Do business until the rapture. Until the very last second, we should be working for the kingdom of God. We should invest, be investing in the things of God. We should be, because guess what? Nothing else matters. Think about that. When we, when we stand before Jesus, does anything else, well, Jesus, you know what, that, that jersey I bought that one week, that was fly, you know what I'm saying? I bought that original, like that Tom Brady jersey, and I went and the, the Nikes, uh -huh, now, now what'd you do for the kingdom? But yeah, Lord, but I bought that, you know what I'm saying? And, I, and not to say that God doesn't want us to have things. I'm not saying that God doesn't want us to live in rags and things of that nature, but I'm talking about prioritizing. There's a time where you, you, you we get outside of the lines in which God wants us to, 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 to do and to steward and to prioritize. We're not going to have this conversation about, well, Lord, you know what? I, hey, man, I, I lived it up. Well, you know, what did you do for me? Well, you know, I, I did a couple of things, you know. I, I too many things. Don't be so hard on me, Lord. Okay. Luke 2, 48 and 50. Luke 2, 48 through 50. Why did Jesus say, occupy till I come? Why did Jesus say, do business till I come? He's still talking about stewardship. That's why he came back to give an account. I gave you some wealth. That's why he says, when riches increase, set not your heart on them. The transfer of wealth that is already happening in the spirit that is going to manifest there's going to be a lot of people that wake up and they're millionaires because of their investments, because they've been listening to the prophets of God, because they said, you know what? I'm going to do this thing. I want to know. God spoke some things and I just put my, hey, listen, I'm going to put it in there. Why? Not because Pastor Jay wants to be a billionaire, because Pastor Jay wants to be able to say, you know what? One of the things that has given me a burning passion, and I, th I thank God for this burning passion. I am so tired of seeing people who are trying to do ministry on a shoestring budget. I am so tired of people who I see with the heart of God, and I'm not just talking about us, who, des <coughs> who desire to do more and have to deal with less. Lord is placing it upon my heart. Listen, Johnny, I make you, I'm putting it out there by faith, billionaire. I want to be, and not billionaire just to say that I'm a billionaire. No, 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 no. It's his. I want to be a steward because there's some people that are not stewarding it right. I know people with churches, got classrooms, land, property, empty, dead, dead churches, no evangelism, no nothing going on there. And they're happy with it because it's just me and us, our family. We just come here and we just praise the Lord. And we just no, no, no time out for that. I'm talking about, hey, sister, you said you wanted to get those transition houses. Here's a check for $3 million. Go ahead and get your 5, 10, 15 uh, transition houses. I'll help you pay for your 501c3 today because it's not about me. I don't care about it's the, the title of this ministry. The title, it's the body of Christ. I don't care about that. I have, I sincerely and truly do not care. That's why we, we partner with many, various ministries when it's time to go out and feed the homeless. We all divvy up who going to take care of what, who going to pay for it, who going to, we, we don't care because it's God's money. That's why we do what we do. We want to be able to do it on a grander scale. Hey, since you said you know some people in need, it, it, Here's a fund. Let, let's let's create a let's create a foundation and a fund to where we just go around and I want you to interview people and I want you to see where the needs are within the community. Of course, the Bible says take care of those, especially those who are of the household of faith. We do that first, and then everybody else. Right? That's what the Word of God says. It says do good to them, especially those who are of the household of faith. That's scripture. Even in the Bible, it talks about. The widows who you're going to take care of, it says to make sure that they've been faithful, to make sure that they're in the word, to make sure that they're living a life that is exemplary according to Christ. So why did Jesus say, do business, occupy until I come? Well, here it says. And when they saw him, they were amazed. His mother and his son 
son, why hast thou dealt with us? Because behold, thy father and I so have I sought thee sorrowing. They were looking for Jesus. Jesus was in the temple. In fact, in another scripture says, who is my mother and my brother? But he that doeth the will of the father, right? He was saying, who? who? Your mother and your, your brother is outside. Well, who, who, who's that? But he that doeth the will of the father, he was pointed to the congregation and the people who were listening to him in the temple. And here's Jesus saying, and he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist not that I must be about my father's business. There goes that word again, my father's business. Occupy till I come, do business till I come. How must I must be about my father's business? Well, if we are followers of Christ, and he says, follow me, take up your cross, deny yourself and follow me, follow my example. If Jesus was about his father's business, then we must be about his father's business. What is his father's business? Expanding the kingdom of God. That's what he was doing in the temple. He was teaching the word of God. He was making disciples. That's the father's business. We're in the business of making disciples. And there are several different tools, several different components, several different ways in which we do that. Verse 50, and they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. They, of course, sometimes Jesus would speak and it'd be over their heads. Some, some, some of this is you're going to tell people that this is the priority. This is what we should be doing. And they're going to say, well, that's over my head. That, that, that doesn't make sense to me. That's fine. That's fine. Continue to pray for him until it does. So in 1 Corinthians 7, 12, 7, 11, it's talking about the spiritual gifts. We're to be stewards over the spiritual gifts. I talked about that in weeks past, but it's so important that we emphasize and understand that with the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes the gifts of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit. Uh, and so we need to be praying for revelation about what those are. And then, of course, in Ephesians 4 verses 11 through 12, we get an understanding of the fivefold ministry where it talks about. And I, and I say this all the time. He gave he gave some apostles some teachers, some pre some some pastors, some evangelists, some prophets for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God, for the for the for the equipping of the saints, for the edification. So we have to be good stewards of those gifts. Good stewards means I have to allow the Lord to use me. I have to allow I'm uh, right now. This is a part of my stewardship. I come on a Sunday and I say, and all throughout the week I'm praying and I'm, and sometimes I'm fasting and I'm, and I'm, I'm searching the scriptures and I prioritize what it is that God has called me to do for the benefit of who the body of Christ and who's the head of the body of Christ, Christ. So as I'm ministering, I'm teaching, I'm teaching us because I'm listening as I'm teaching, even though you think I'm delivering the word, I'm learning even as I'm delivering. I'm learning even as I'm delivering. He's literally picked me up as an instrument. And as if I'm having this like out of body, I'm on the sideline right now at the same time as I'm teaching, but I'm listening to the Holy Spirit speak through me. Stewardship. Stewards of God. Stewards of God. Hello, family. This is Pastor Jay with Hope for Today Ministries, and I pray that today's message has been a blessing to you. For ways to give, uh, if you look on the screen, we have our cash app, which is dollar sign Hope for Today Ministries. Uh, we also have our website, Hope for Today Ministries. Also, uh, my website, johnnybrenham.org, where you can find all of our ministry uh, workings and ways to give. And finally, there's a unique way to give by simply joining our shopping club. Uh, you join the shopping club and it has over 400 products. Every time that you shop for uh, items that you would already buy at your local grocery store or uh, shopping center, uh, will go towards our ministries. We have over 400 products in this shopping club from everything from soap, uh, coffee, tea, vitamins, snacks for the home, all healthy, all things that are going to help improve your health and also be a blessing uh, to our ministry and the work that we're doing. I do pray that we see you on the next video. Uh, until then, may the Lord bless and keep you. God bless.